Hey YouTube, Ben here again. Today let's talk about patch panels. What are they? And do you need one? First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has watched, commented, and liked my do-it-yourself budget home network video, link below. I super appreciate the comments and the likes and never imagined it would take off like it has. I'm glad there are so many that are liking it. I'm learning lots from the comments and I hope maybe some of you are picking up some tips too, just maybe not electrical wiring tips. One of the more common questions I get on that video is about the patch panel I have in my setup. What is it? What does it do? Do I have to have one? The simple answer is no, you don't have to have it. Could it save you some money if you didn't get one? Maybe. Could it add complexity to an otherwise simple setup? Depending on your setup, maybe. However, if you understand the concept behind it and the benefits one can offer, most would strongly consider one. So here's the scoop. What is a patch panel? A patch panel is a panel with an array of Ethernet ports on the front and places to punch down bare wires on the back. Each port on the patch panel labeled with a number, will connect via an ethernet cable punched down on the back, through the wall, crawl space, or attic to another location in the house. This other location will have the same ethernet cable terminated at a wall plate. Needless to say then, a patch panel is something you would only consider if you were going to use wired ethernet connections in your house or office. If you only do Wi-Fi in your house or office, then there is no need for a patch panel, or a switch, or any of the other nerdy things featured in my videos. Wi-Fi is great, and is getting better with every iteration, but I try to wire everything I can. It's just more reliable, quicker, and more secure. Think of a patch panel this way. A patch panel is a lot like the wall plate on the other end of the ethernet cable. Sure, you don't have to have a wall plate, or a keystone there. You could just have the ethernet cable hang out of the wall and you could put an ethernet jack on the end of it. You could just dangle the cable there when not in use, but that wouldn't look very good. The cable would always be there for anyone to see at any time. Also, if you're going to plug and unplug the cable often, you will wear out the cable. Right at the wall, would present a spot where the solid core wires in the ethernet cable could short or break. We'll talk about solid core versus stranded uh, ethernet cables later. So if it breaks, you'll have to fix the cable that's in the wall and hope that you have extra in the wall if you need it. Some people would argue that solid core ethernet cable doesn't just break like that and it's just made up, but I'd rather not find out. Most will just terminate the cable in the keystone and have it stop at the ethernet jack right at the wall. It's neater, no cable dangling, no need to mess with your cables in the wall, and you can just use a normal ethernet cable to go from the wall plate to the PC. Makes sense, right? Well, a patch panel is pretty much the same thing on a bigger scale for the other end of your cable. A patch panel allows you great flexibility to add other cables down the road. You just run another line, add it to the patch panel, it gives you a neat look and a simple way to manage, configure, and reconfigure your network down the road. For example, say we are setting up a network in our home and we want to use a patch panel. I have prepared a very high-tech computer rendering to assist with this explanation. Say our first Ethernet cable we want to run will be in the office, and the patch panel is in the next room in the closet. So this is where we want to place the wall jack in the office. And this is where we will have our patch panel. So number one, run your cable to where you want your wall jack to be, as you can see in this picture. Next, pull your cable out, terminate it using a keystone, snap your keystone into the wall plate, and screw on the wall plate to the wall. Next, run the other end of the cable to the location where your patch panel and other network hardware is. We will take this end of the ethernet cable and we will terminate it into the back of the patch panel. 
we used spot number one on the patch panel. So we will go back and write a number one on our wall plate in the office. Here you can see I have some numbers written on some of my wall plates throughout my house. And they correspond to the numbers on my patch panel. So in this example now we can remember that the Ethernet jack in the office is connected to port 1 on the patch panel. Generally at this point we would use a patch cable which is just a name for a shorter Ethernet cable that goes from the patch panel to the switch to finish the connection. Now anything you plug into port 1 in the office will be connected to the switch. That is basically how a patch panel is used. It allows your permanent network wiring that is not meant to be messed with or moved ever a permanent, neat, and organized place to interface with the rest of your network equipment. Now I know what you're thinking, Ben, you still haven't answered the whole question. Why not just terminate the end of the Ethernet cable with a jack and just plug it straight into a switch? Do I have to have one or not? Well, before we start on the reasons why you might want one, let's first look at a few reasons why you might not want one and stay tuned as we'll go over the pros of having one towards the end of the video. Number one, save money. Clearly a patch panel isn't free. If you are on an extreme budget, then you could forego the patch panel. Keep in mind the savings might not be as great as you think. Your mileage may vary. You might not have to get as many patch cables or none whatsoever. And you might not need a punch down tool unless you are terminating your wall jacks around the house. But you might find you need more Ethernet jacks instead. If you are on a budget, just do your homework and see if it will save you money. Number two, initial setup might be easier. Once your patch panel is all set up, it will for sure make the rest of your network life so much easier. But if you want the initial setup of your network to be easier, then you could skip the patch panel. Subtracting the patch panel would also mean your network might be up and running a little quicker. You could just put an ethernet jack on the end of the cable running through the wall and plug it straight into the switch. Number three, your network size is small or you won't change anything later. So if your network is super small, only a few PCs for example, then you might not need a patch panel and you probably would only want a small switch or just use the ports on your router and you wouldn't even be after a larger rack setup like the one featured in my videos. Also if you are never going to change or reconfigure your network after your initial setup then the benefits of a patch panel uh, might be minimal. Number four, only using Wi-Fi. Clearly if you are strictly using Wi-Fi then you won't need a patch panel. All right, let's talk now about the benefits of having a patch panel. Number one, it lets you use the proper type of cable in the proper place. All right, hear me out. The ethernet cabling that runs inside walls and in crawl spaces is different from your normal ethernet cables that you use to plug in your computer. The cables you use to plug in your computer are meant to be handled and plugged in and out many times. They are made from stranded wires and are more flexible. The type of cable that you should run through your walls and crawl spaces are solid core wires. Each wire in the cable is a single solid copper wire. This type of wire is stiffer and can be a little more fragile when bent a bunch than its stranded cousin and oftentimes just won't bend quite how you want it to. This solid core cable is meant to better punch down in patch panels and keystones. Ideally, once you run this type of cable, you never want to move it or mess with it again unless you have to. If you terminate this type of cable with a jack and just plug it into the switch, which of course is possible, you could wear out this type of cabling if you are moving the cable a lot when configuring your network. The more you mess with it, the better chance you have of messing up the cable, breaking a wire, or creating a short. If this happens, you are troubleshooting the cable that runs through your walls and crawl space, and that's not easy. If you have a patch panel, this stiffer, solid core ethernet cabling stops at your patch panel. You never have to mess with it again. 
like I mentioned earlier, some would say this is not true, that it is perfectly fine to use solid core anywhere, and the higher chances of ruining it is just made up. While it is possible to use solid core Ethernet anywhere, I would rather use stranded cables where I can. Also, since running some of these cables through walls and crawl spaces is oftentimes not simple, I would rather not chance having to do it twice. Once your cable is terminated at the patch panel, from there you are using a patch cable to go the rest of the way to the switch, or anywhere you might be routing it. The patch cable is made of the stranded Ethernet cabling and is much better suited for the task of being messed with, bent, and changed as you reconfigure your network over the years. Which brings me to our next point. Number two, easy configuring and troubleshooting of your network. All right, so hardware gets old, breaks, it becomes outdated. Maybe you decide to set up a few cameras, video cameras around the house. So you need to get a PoE switch instead of a normal one. Maybe your son is grounded and you want to disable his ethernet ports in his room. Perhaps you decide to rearrange the ports in your house to be on a specific switch to help with speed and congestion. All of this is quick and easy with a patch pad. Instead of messing with the solid core ethernet cables, you never have to touch them or move them, like I said. All you have to mess with are the patch cables. If the patch cable goes bad, toss it and grab another. It also helps add to the neatness and professionalism, not to mention nerdiness and complete awesomeness of your setup. You can label the patch panel as well if you want, instead of having to label your switch or labeling your cables with hard to read markings on the cable itself or without having to put tags on the cables that might fall off over time and then they just don't look as good. You'll know that port one is the PC, port two is the IP phone, port three is the camera, port four is the TV, etc. Troubleshooting is much easier as well, in my opinion, with a patch panel. There are exceptions, of course, but most of the time, when there are connectivity problems, you first look at the patch cables or the PC, as they are most often the problem. You will rarely need to troubleshoot the cables in the walls and crawl space, as they are set up once, tested to be working, and never touched or moved again. Number three, professional looking and neat. Clearly, it's hard to debate that a patch panel looks cool and it makes any job looks professional. It is also very obvious that it makes cable management easier and gives a much neater look. In my setup, for example, if I had my ethernet cables going straight to the switch, it would not look as neat. You would see much more of the cables and they would have to come up under the hull rack, over the power strip, and into the switch. Doable? Yes. Recommended? No, and certainly not. It's neat looking. Remember, for me, this had to look neat. It was a goal of mine. I wanted something I could show off, and without a patch panel, I might not want to show it off as much as I do now. Also, as I mentioned in my do-it-yourself budget network video, link in the description, by the way, I do have some wall jacks that I am not using yet. For example, the wall jack behind the TV. Once my current TV bites the dust, my replacement will for sure be an internet capable TV. I have a wall jack behind it terminated at my patch panel, just waiting to be plugged in when the time comes. It's currently not being used, but because it's terminated at the patch panel, it's not seen, yet still ready to go. It's not dangling there, and it's not needlessly plugged into my switch, waiting there, taking up a space, a spot on the switch, being an eyesore. Remember, neatness was very high on my list, so I had to have one. Number four, flexibility. If you are running other types of cables through your house or office, such as telephone wiring, you could use telephone wire or even ethernet cabling for phone and have your data, say ports one through 15 and phone wires 16 through 24, for example, terminate on the same patch panel or another patch panel specific for phone use. Also, normal phone jacks will fit into an ethernet port and you can use your ethernet cabling to extend or route a phone line through your house. You could also use a crossover cable 
and plug it into two specific ports on the patch panel and create a mini standalone network. So there's lots of flexibility with a patch panel. Number five, in larger applications, it could save you money. In a large home or office with lots of connections, a patch panel could save money. Here are a few examples. Most of my videos will focus on networks in homes. It's just more fun. But with a larger office, for example, patch panels make quick work of reconfiguring networks so your text can get in and get out quicker, saving money. If you don't use a patch panel, we can all assume your cables will run to the switch. Even the unused cables are taking up a port on the switch. If I had more than 24 ports in my house, for example, and had them all plugged straight into the switch, I would need another switch, even though not all of the ports on them are being used. With a patch panel, all of the ports around my house are still ready to go at a moment's notice, and yet are not taking up space on my switch, nor just hanging in there when not needed. And number six, total serious nerd street cred. I mean, come on, seriously, look at that thing. It's pretty awesome. Nothing says I love over-engineering things and am a giant IT nerd like a patch panel in a comm closet in a residential home. It's nerd bling, and sometimes that's the only reason you might need. So I leave it up to you guys. In the end, the decision is yours. I hope this information helps you decide if you need one or not. Do you have a patch panel or would you in your setup? Would you not? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely interested to hear what other setups you all have. So leave a comment or a question. I try to answer as many as I can. Thanks for watching.